All right, everyone, welcome back to 3 a.m. cards, and we're just jumping right in today because not only is it our first March of the Machine collector box, but today's also special because we're doing a booster box battle, collector booster box battle. So Pokemon TV Unlimited over at their YouTube channel, they have challenged me to a box opening battle. So what we're going to do is we're both going to open a collector box, a March of the Machine, and whoever has the more open value in the Mythic and Rare slot... Um, they're going to win, and we have wagered. Let me grab them real quick. We've wagered two of these. Throne of Eldraine Collector Packs. So again, that's the YouTube channel, Pokemon TV Unlimited. Go ahead and make sure to check out their channel. He's got a lot of great content over there. He opens Magic the Gathering and obviously Pokemon as well. Very knowledgeable, especially about Pokemon. I don't know anything about it. I would maybe like to do another collab with him in the future on some Pokemon stuff. But um, let's just go ahead and see how this goes. Let's get started. Here we go. And good luck to Pokemon TV Unlimited. We're going to see who gets more value. And I'll also put a link in the description for, uh, for their channel. I appreciate him doing this with me, but I want to win. And being this is my first March of the Machine, I do... Uh, yeah, this is my first March of the Machine opening on uh, video. I think we did a couple of those set bundles on a stream, but... Um, yeah, I don't know that much about this set. I've studied it as much as I can, but I got a lot going on. Hard names to pronounce, so we'll see how that goes. But it's supposed to be a good set. And we have the Multi-Universe Legends. That's a little subset in this. Because the March of the Machine set itself, there's some value in there. And we have Brothers War Collector Packs that are not going to want to open. Is that what's going on here? All right. Figured out a way to open it. All right, starting off, so good luck to him. Good luck to me. I want to win his Throne of Eldraine Collector Packs, but it's all love. Glad to see uh, other smaller YouTubers uh, helping out each other here. And again, this is uh, my real first look at March of the Machine in the Collector Box, so let's see what all the rage is about. So Transcendent Mage, we're starting off with that. That is just a rare. Then C-Double. This spell can't be copied, but that's, that's one of the ones where, yeah, you can uh, copy target spells, so they don't want you starting a loop with that, so. Borderless action on that. Then Vivian's Talent is going to say MOC. That's going to be our commander card there. So Vivian's Talent from, oh yeah, there's a bunch of Enchant Planeswalkers in the commander set, which is interesting. So this one has, uh, Enchant Planeswalker has plus one. Look at the top four cards of your library. Reveal a creature or land uh, from among them. Put it into your hand. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order, so. Interesting, I haven't bought a Commander Precon in a while, but I'm going to for, uh, yeah, Lord of the Rings, that's what it's called. All right, so then, yeah, this uh, MLU down there, that's going to be our multi, uh, multi-universe multi legend, I do believe exactly it's called. It's a subset similar to what we saw with Strixhaven, Mystical Archive, uh, Brothers War, Retro Frame Artifacts, so just an uncommon on that. A lot of the cards in there are uncommons, and you can see uh, that's like a reprint from Call Dimes, so they've actually copied the art style from a lot of the sets that the cards are coming from. They're all reprints in there. Oh, Realm Breaker, the Invasion Tree. Okay, this is from Mom, so just a uh, just a rare on that. Did we not get a Mythic? I don't think we got a Mythic. Okay, so. But we get Goreclaw, Terror of Qual Sisma from the Multi-Universe Legends. So that one we recently saw, I do believe, in Jumpstart 2022. Is it Multiverse Legends? Multi-Universe Legends? I should have looked that up. I've just had a lot going on lately. Card shows, getting caught up on TCG listings. That's one of the reasons why you haven't seen as much content from me lately. And the whole March of the Machine ordering disaster, we had that. So, again, I'm happy Pokemon TV Unlimited challenged me. So I can get a couple box openings in before my main inventory arrives. Yeah, because this was just a collector box I ordered on the side. Again, my March of the Machine stuff's coming when the Aftermath set releases. Should be shipping this week, so... Invasion of Innistrad. Why are we invading Innistrad? Okay. Yeah, so these are the battle cards. Um, I don't think I got a chance to talk about these. These are interesting. So, essentially, you cast this, and then you choose uh, the player that's going to defend it. Yeah, uh, choose an opponent to protect it, so you can't protect it yourself. So, this you would cast this for four mana. It would go on the play on your opponent's side. 
And then this is, uh, it's really just something that they have to defend. So I do believe, I'm pretty sure on Arena, you have to select, or I guess in any game, not just Arena, you have to select if you're attacking the opponent, the battle card, or Planeswalker if there's one, one in play. So this take, can take five damage. So then um, it's got some abilities like this one when it enters, it has flash. Uh, target creature and opponent controls gains minus 13, minus 13 till end of turn. Might as well just uh, kill it at that point, right? And so this, has, again, has the five, um, I guess they're called, what are they called exactly? Uh, like a, I forget what kind of counter they call, but these are counters, similar to Planeswalkers. So then once that dies, um, the card go ahead and the card will transform. So for this one, we get Deluge of the Dead. So we get those abilities there. And there's the battlefield. Create two, uh, two, two black zombie creature tokens. And then that uh, three ability there. Exile target creature from a graveyard, from any graveyard. It's a little graveyard hate here. I like it. That creature, if there was a creature card, create another 2-2 black zombie creature token. So hopefully I didn't, uh, tried, I tried to explain the battle cards correctly. Hopefully that made sense. Just go play Arena. You'll see exactly what they, uh, exactly how they operate. Then we got Tribute to the World Tree and the Borderless here. I do like this one. Maybe Mono Green will make a comeback in Standard. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if its power is three or greater, uh, you draw a card, but otherwise you put 2-1-1 counters on it. So that's any creature entering the battlefield. So you got a bunch of 1-1 one, one, uh, tokens coming out. Now they're going to be 3-3s three, at least. Then we got Path of the Ghost Hunter from MOC, the Mom Commander set. Then we got a couple multi-universe legends here in the uncommon slot. Oh, okay. So I do believe this art style here um, was from Kaladesh. I wasn't playing at the time, but I think Kaladesh had some fancy like masterpiece cards in there. And I do believe that's similar to that style. Um, oh no, this is from the mom set. Okay, that's through. Yeah, that's weird. Okay. I thought that was a multi-universe legends card for a second, but it's not. So we got two guys up there. Yeah. Uh, so the theme of this set, March of the Machine, the Phyrexians are trying to kill everyone. So you have everyone from all the different planes and magic, all the different multiverses, whatever you want to call them, teaming up. So this is one of those right there. Hazaret and Dejura. Probably pronounced it wrong. That's going to happen a lot in this video. So trigger warning. Just watch out, guys. Then we got Orphan Guard. Reprint from Ikaria. Liar of Behemoths. So me and Pokemon TV Unlimited are going to go ahead and upload our upload our videos at the same time. And then I guess we'll go ahead and shoot reaction videos for the winner or loser. But at the end of this video, I'm going to do the pricing thing where we'll take a live look and see what kind of value we got out of this collector box. Do we get a serialized card? Probably not. So Ominith Locus of All. So he is back. Uh, but apparently, I'm not going to waste time reading it if you want to pause and read this one. I'm being told it's one of the worst versions of Ominith there. But I don't know. People will do something crazy with it, I'm sure. And Chandra's back. Chandra Hope's Beacon. So possibly the first Mythic of the Box, so I'm keeping track correctly. So that is from the regular Mom set. March of the Machine. Then Exanguinator Calvary. I was going to say that sound that has a Commander set written all over it. Which that is what it's from. Then Renata, uh, yeah, uh, a reprint from, uh, shit, I do believe one of the Theros sets. I don't think it's Theros Beyond Death. I know she was in there, but I think with a different card. Yeah, he's from uh, Theros, I do believe, as well. Then Into the Fire, extended art foil. Then Judith, the Scorned Diva. And we also recently saw that one in Double Masters 2022, I do believe. I don't have a problem with the reprints, but it's getting a little, I mean, I don't really think that's a card. Uh, sorry there, Judith, which is actually, actually my mom's name as well, which is funny, ironic, but, um, I don't think uh, anyone cares about her getting reprinted, but reprinting the same card twice in one year, that's not like a common or uncommon utility card. I don't know how I feel about that. Elsbeth's Talent from the Commander set. Yeah, it's another one, Enchant Planeswalker. Enchant Planeswalker has plus one loyalty. Create three one one white uh, soldier creature tokens. All right, that's not terrible. And whenever you activate a loyalty ability of Enchanted Planeswalker creatures you control, get plus two, plus two in Vigilance to end the turn. All right. All right, then we got uh, Barla and Kat Karazev. From, uh, yeah, it's a mom set. So yeah, we're going to see a lot of these team up cards here. They're teaming up. So I guess this is the showcase versions. Okay, I think I see what's going on here. Okay, so those are the showcase ones probably from the mom set. They are teaming up to destroy the Phyrexians. 
I actually don't even really know what happened in the story in this. I'm sure it was interesting, though. I'm sure I'll find, find out about it at some point. Uh, War Riders from Commander. Rona, Herald of Invasion. For the showcase there in a foil. Yeah, see, uh, uh, do you understand why this is throwing me off here? Because these look very similar in style, but that's a multi-universe Legends card. And then that is just a March of the Machine regular showcase card. So variants on top of variants. Then we've got Captain uh, Lannery Storm. Human Pirate for the Multi-Universe Legends. And, oh, that's a... Okay, so yeah, new kind of foiling here. And it's showing up good on camera. I forgot about this. So these are Halo foils. So something being in a Halo foil that can definitely take one of these multi... Whatever, Universe Legends cards that isn't worth a lot. But in a Halo foil, could be worth uh, some decent money. I pulled one the other day out of a pack. I can't remember which one it was, but... It was worth like a dollar in the regular version. Then like 16 or 17 in the uh, Halo foil. How many new foils have been in introduced over the past two years? It's ridiculous. Hard to keep track of. Glistening Dawn. Yeah, and then this is what I was talking about. Another, uh, so this is a showcase team up card here from Mom. So we got Kroxa and Kenoros. Again, if I'm pronouncing anything wrong, excuse me, I apologize. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's so confusing. They look so similar. Some of the showcase cards, then the multi-universe legends cards. So another Elspeth's talent. Then Daxos, blessed by the sun. Yes, reprint from Theros Beyond Death. And the complete the circuit. Oh, I think I know what that is. So we got complete the circuit. Um, what's this one do? Convoke. You may cast sorcery spells this turn as though they had flash. Whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell twice. You may choose new targets for the copy. I, there's a lot of convoke in this set, so that basically means you can tap your creatures. I think that helps pay for one colorless of the uh, of the casting cost there. Then yes, that's who it is. This nasty guy right here. Surprisingly, this version's only a couple bucks, but this one isn't a foil. So we got Vorinclex. Voice of Hunger, 8 mana, 7, 6, Trample. Whenever you tap a land from, uh, add 1 mana of any type that land produced. Then whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't untap during its next controller's untap step. Very salty right there. That is, uh, that is, I'd be pretty pissed if someone got that on the battlefield against me. And that is a Mythic. And what are we doing with our... Yeah, the Mythics are all over the place. I'm over it. At least I have an excuse now because like just these variants and looking similar, it's pretty crazy. But I'm feeling the flavor of the set so far. And then I guess, is that Elspeth getting her head ripped off by Karn? I do believe that is. All right. Yeah, things got out of hand in this set, huh? Things really went to shit. Oh, and we got Invasion of Gobacon. So is... Now, I recently learned, so a lot of these Invasions cards, they actually introduced a lot of uh, planes that, um, universes, whatever you want to call them, for Magic the Gathering that uh, I wasn't familiar with. And a lot of them are really obscure. Like, some of them were mentioned once in the uh, flavor text of a card, like, years ago. But I could be wrong, but is Gobacon... I know one of them is where Strixhaven actually is, because Strixhaven is actually just a school of mages in that plane. So I'll, I'll, I think I see it. I think I can tell it's from Strixhaven when I see it. Then we got the Voldare and Thrillseeker. Mist Meadow Vanisher from Mock, M-O-C. I don't even know what the, what the hell happened to that pile. Yeah. Over it, guys. All right, then we got Yargol and uh, Multani. Then Umari. Oh, look at that. That looks really cool. Okay, it's not a hollow foil, but that just looks awesome in that foiling. Yeah, and um, he was from Ikaria, uh, Lyra Behemoth. So, for the multi-universe legends, they've used that similar like comic book art style that they used from that set. Um, I was, uh, I did like some of those when they did that style for uh, Ikaria. Tough packs to open. Yep, these are just like those Brothers War packs. I don't know if these, these might be, I don't know if these are the Japanese or wherever they're printing these cards now. But maybe uh, when we get our boxes, they'll open easier. Yeah, and a lot of the uh, in battle cards are just, um, I must call them, I guess you call them invasion cards too. A lot of them are just uncommon. So we got Invasion of Uragom right there. 
There's a ton of them in this set. So we got Blood Feather Phoenix. God, what is going on with the piles here? Flipping mess. Oh, Heliod. Okay, that is not Heliod Sun Crown. Again, yeah, I'd like see, I, at first I thought that was from the multi universe legends, but it's just from Mom. So Heliod, the Radiant Dawn. Yeah, and a lot of these transform too, which we'll take a look at in uh, future videos. We're almost at like 14 minutes here, so this is going way longer than I thought. But you may cast spells as though they had flash, so that looks pretty cool. I'll have to take a look at that in more con in more detail at one point, more content. We got Orc Pirate from Mock. I'm gonna love saying that. Where's the mock pile? Where is the mock pile? Right there. Hoarding uh, Brood Lord from Mom. Wow, eight mana, seven, six Convoke. Yeah, like I said, a lot of things in here have Convoke. So when it, this one might be interesting. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, exile it face down, then shuffle for as long as that card remains exiled, you may play it. Spells you cast from exile have Convoke. Okay. Interesting. And then, oh, look at that. That is a Yorian right there. But the foiling on these is... is I don't think this is a different kind of foiling from the standard foiling. I think for the multi-universe legends, they just use quality foiling. So you can see like certain things pop out on the card. Like that's a good foiling right there. That's just not a crappy lamination. But too bad Yorian's banned in modern, right? Y'all ruined it. I'm blinking everything a bunch of times. Blinking your Yorian so it blinks everything else. So what is that, the third companion, third or fourth companion to get banned in different formats from that set? It's nuts. Uh, we got the uh, Quintor uh, Quintoris? Quintoris Lore Master. That definitely has a... Uh... No, I was going to say, that's not. I don't think that is uh, a Strixhaven. I think there's a land that has all these like uh, elephant people in it. So This is a good set because you're going to learn a lot about magic. Another Hoarding Broodlord. Blight Titan. Okay, so we got two things going on here. First, we got uh, Polychronos, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Reborn. This one isn't worth a lot. He's got these abilities where he transforms. Yeah, he transforms into that thing. But I think just from uh, mono green aggro in standard, a three mana, four, five with reach. Like, you can't beat that. That's awesome. Okay, then we got the uh, Anafenza, Kin Tree Spirit. Someone's going to be like, oh my god, he pronounced that wrong. I'm checking out, bro. I think that's what someone said in the comments one time when I pronounced Jin Gataxius' name wrong. I called him like Jin Gitaraxis. I, I've never seen anything spelled like that before. Excuse me for not being an expert on Jin Gitaxius. Then once I learn to say the words, I just uh, say them over, over and over again. Jin Gitaxius. Into the fire. Another Blood Feather Phoenix. And uh, Pokemon TV Unlimited. I think you're going to take this one. Because this is... Uh, again, I'm not really knowledgeable about this set yet. But from what I've seen, I don't think we're hitting anything big here. The Knight Errant of... Uh, Knight Errant of Eos. I guess he is related to Ranger Captain of Eos from Modern Horizons 1. Then Shram. Senior uh, Edificer. I always thought he was, like, smoking a cigarette there. I don't know what he's doing, though. I don't know if the uh, cigarettes exa exist in the world of Magic the Gathering. And these packs are ridiculous. How is... There's really, like, no tab on them. Okay, I, th I thought maybe I thought the packaging looked funny for a second, but I was just tricking myself. I was just going to use the excuse that these packs are tampered because we're getting such a... I don't want to say it's a bad box. That's why we're going to price it and see. I really shouldn't be saying anything because I don't know yet. Okay, so we got that team up there. I can't say his name. Bor Bor Gamos. Yeah, we'll go with that. You're never going to play the card, so why do you care? All right, then we got one of him before. Another team up card. Nesting Dovehawk. From Mock. Oh, okay, so I got to keep an eye out for that. So that's a Halo. Yeah, that, is that a Halo foil? Yeah, because it's got like the designs in there. 
So Halo Foil on an Uncommon from the Multi-Universe Legends. So we'll check the price on that. Although for this box opening, we just said we were doing Rares and Mythics. I don't want to make things too confusing, so we won't count that in the price. I just want to know what it's worth. Okay, then we got Grafted Butcher. And then another SRAM there. So now I am even more confused. Where did I put him before? Okay, so now, wow. So now the multi-universe legends, I know they had uh, the, the foil and the halo foil and the regular version, but it looks like we have two different versions of uh, cards now. So more variants within variants within the variant reprint set. Is that really what we're doing here? Okay, I do prefer that artwork more, but yeah, that's just too many variants, right? And we're at like 20 minutes for the opening now. Usually my collector boxes are done in like 10 minutes, but that's usually when I know the set more. So that will be happening. Uh, hopefully in the next few openings, we'll be able to start ripping these apart really quick. We got another Heliod. Bloated Processor. Why is that? I'm thinking Bloated Contaminator probably. I was going to say that seems familiar. Begin the Invasion. Okay, search your library for up to X battle cards with different names and put them onto the battlefield and shuffle. So that's from Commander, from Mach. So I'm guessing there are additional battle cards in the Commander Precons then. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, snap! Okay. So we got two guys here. First we got... uh. Oh, no. See, this is why I'm getting confused. You guys see why I'm getting confused now? Why don't you look at them? They're from the same box, but same set, but no. Okay, so this is just... That is not... This is not Vorinclex Voice of Hunger. This is just a regular Vorinclex from the mom set, but in a foil here. So, I do believe this is a showcase foil. Uh, Trample and Reach on this version of... Uh, Warren Clex, yes, that's it. When enters the battlefield, search your library for up to two forest cards. Reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle. Then eight mana, we can exile him, return to the battlefield, transformed. Under your control. Only as a sorcery. Okay, and we got Grand Evolution. One, so it's a saga here. So first one, mill ten cards. Mill ten cards, wow. Put up the two creature cards, milled that way from the... Oh, wow, from the milled cards onto the battlefield. Then you got distribute seven one one counters among any number of target creatures you control, and then three there until end of turn. Creatures you control gain one. This creature fights target creature you don't control. Exile uh, the grand evolution, then return it to the battlefield. Tap. So wow. So after sorry, that might have been a little off camera there when I was reading that. Um, so yeah, that this is holy shit. This is pretty nuts here. So you get all those crazy abilities. I mean, you got to pay a lot of mana to cast more and collect and transform. Uh, transform him but then uh so you exile this and return it to the bat face up so okay so it starts over wow is that really how that works i'm gonna have to play around on arena and see all right then we got a niv mizzet reborn from the uh, multi-universe legends there again that's yeah i don't know variants on top of variants all right, last pack here, then we're going to look at the live pricing. So one last final good luck to Pokemon TV Unlimited. More importantly, myself. Okay, so we got Drana and Linvala here in the last pack. Zephyr Singer. Yes. Or Z Zephyr, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think Zephyr Falcon was a card from when I was a kid. Fire Main Commando from Mach. Okay, so we got another Brawl and Kyra Zev. Kyra Zev sounds like some uh, female wrestler from NXT. If you watch WWE, you know what I'm talking about. It just sounds like the same name. And then, okay, so Gigantha. Gigantha, Gigantha. The Wellspring, one of the most used companions in, uh, kind of think, a lot of formats. Uh, but this is a Halo foil. And again, we have that comic book style artwork that we saw in Ikaria Liar Behemoth. So, all right. Opening is done. Let's go ahead and price all this out and see how we did. All right, everyone. The box has been totaled up and Pokemon TV Unlimited. I really think you're going to take this one. If you do not, I feel bad for you because my box only totaled $102.16. 
in the rare and mythic slot. So we basically lost 50% with this box. Big winner of the box was the Gigantha, Gigantha, whatever. The Wellspring, Halo Foil, $22.26. Then we had Vorinclex, Showcase Foil, $11.77. Tribute to the World Tree, $6.97 in the extended art. Warren Kleck's Voice of Hunger from the Multi-Universe Legends. Multiverse Legends, I'm seeing it here. It's actually uh, correctly called. 593, the Chandra Hopes Beacon from the Mom set at 553. Then everything else in the set was worth under $5. Most of the cards being worth under a dollar. Um, yeah, it's just the way it goes, guys. I think we got a bum box here. We see that that happens, um, especially... When you pull them from a case, I always say it, you get two really good boxes. The other four are a complete crapshoot, and we got crap out of this box. So, But again, that happens. Um, I'm not really worried about the set. From what I'm seeing, they're still good value. Uh, the boxes are still doing good. So again, it's a gamble. We just got a bad one. That's all it is. So we'll see how Pokemon TV Unlimited did, and then hopefully we'll have the results in a couple days.